Anyone interested in westerns has certainly heard about Gunsmoke, and anyone who knows that show remembers Miss Kitty. She was a saloon owner who added sassy female energy in a will-they-won't-they -they romance plot with Matt Dillon. It was what the show needed, and Amanda Blake provided it expertly. The problem was it only lasted for 19 out of 20 seasons. What could have made her leave when she was at the top of her game? Keep watching to learn why Amanda Blake kept this secret while she filmed Gunsmoke. Her early life Beverly Louise Nell was born in Buffalo, New York, February 20th, 1929. She stayed in Buffalo until she was a teen and then moved to California. She attended Pomona College and got her first job as a telephone operator for 40 bucks a day. It helped her improve her diction, an invaluable skill for her career. She got to work on radio and doing dramatic readings at a local women's club. She began her acting career as part of Summerstock in New England. MGM discovered and signed her to a contract. They saw her as a replacement for Greer Garson, a major name in the 1940s who earned five Best Actress Oscar nominations in a row. Amanda eventually burst onto the screen in her own right. Her debut was in 1940s Stars in My Crown. Soon after, she got her stage name, and her career took off with parts in projects like 1952's Cattletown. She also appeared in Miss Robinson Crusoe and A Star is Born in 1954. Why she really quit Gunsmoke Amanda was determined to play Miss Kitty Russell on Gunsmoke. She allegedly refused to leave the casting office until they gave her a chance to audition. She continued playing the character for 19 seasons and over 500 episodes. The role took up a third of her life. Only James Arness and Milburn Stone stayed for its entire 20-season run. Her final episode was the 24th episode of season 19, The Disciple. Her character was replaced by Miss Hannah, played by Fran Ryan, in season 20. She and her fans aren't convinced it's a coincidence that the first season without her was the show's last. There wasn't one reason why she left. It was a combination of factors that all led to one of TV's biggest cast changes. David R. Greenland wrote a book called The Gunsmoke Chronicles, A New History of Television's Greatest Westerns. It gives further details about her departure. Amanda told the press she left because of a long commute. She lived in Phoenix, Arizona, but had to travel all the way to LA to film the show. Her declining health made that commute harder. She began a battle with throat cancer in 1977. It wasn't well known because she wanted to keep it a secret to avoid public scrutiny. There were also personal problems between her and the crew, and the commute was only allegedly one thing she disliked. She had a testy relationship with producer John Manley. He said she was, quote, always complaining about something. He claimed that her decision to leave the show was a, quote, classic case of the employee who quits before they are fired. They both agreed to keep the story out of the public to avoid negative press. Amanda still says she left voluntarily. She says she was tired and ready to go. Her decision to return. The popularity of Gunsmoke helped Amanda become a big Hollywood star. She went into semi-retirement after it ended, but did reappear a few times. She worked in film, but preferred television. Her first starring role was in 1974's Betrayal. She also appeared on The Red Skelton Show, Hollywood Squares, Tattletales, Match Game, and the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. Her career continued, but nothing she was a part of was ever as successful as Gunsmoke. That may have been a part of what convinced her to come back. Amanda reappeared in the 1987 made-for-TV movie Gunsmoke Return to Dodge. There were four other sequels, but she didn't return for any of them. It seemed that one last time was enough to say goodbye to the role that made her famous. The reunion film was one of her final performances. She did appear in at least two other feature films in 1988, The Boost and Born. Other things you didn't know about her. An unlikely relative. She may be forever connected to the Wild West, but she also has a direct genetic connection to a Revolutionary War hero. Catherine Moore, Kate Barry, warned local patriots of the Bannister Tarleton's approach during the Battle of Cowpens on January 17, 1782. It helped them win the battle and was an important step towards the Americans later defeating the British at Yorktown. An unlikely roommate. 
Jan Shepard was a Western star who appeared in Gunsmoke as well as The Virginian, Laramie, and Rawhide. Amanda ended up living with her for a time. In a 2018 interview, she called her a, quote, frisky lady who'd dress up in character for Gunsmoke auditions. Jan was also there when Amanda got the call that she'd landed the role of Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty's Kitties Amanda spent her time after Gunsmoke on another deep passion of hers, animal breeding and conservation. She was one of the first people to successfully breed cheetahs in captivity. In fact, she raised several generations of the big cats. She had a wild animal compound in her home in Phoenix and bred animals there with her husband, Frank Gilbert. She even once brought a lion to the set of Gunsmoke during its final season. His name was Chemo, and he lived on the compound with her. The news took hold and exaggerated the story, with headlines like, Amanda Blake's lion upsets Gunsmoke's set. They sensationalized it as much as they could. Chemo was only a cub in reality and was more of a distraction than a danger. Her charity work. Amanda also worked to support animal conservation in other ways. She founded the Arizona Animal Welfare League, and it remains the oldest no-kill shelter in the state. She established PAWS, or the Performing Animal Welfare Society, in 1985. She devoted her time to supporting it financially and in her travels. She was also reportedly a board member of the Humane Society at one point. President Ronald Reagan gave her the annual Courage Award in 1984. Her traveling spirit. Miss Kitty was a fiery character, and Amanda Blake wasn't the type to stay in one place either. She visited the Galapagos Islands and went to Africa several times. She eventually settled on a 20-acre ranch in Galt, California. Her friend and animal trainer Pat Derby helped her run the land. It wasn't just a place for her to retire. Animals such as Christopher the Cougar from a run of Lincoln Mercury car commercials also spent their golden years there. Her death. Amanda Blake died at age 60 on August 16, 1989. The cause of her death was initially listed as throat cancer. She was a heavy smoker, had surgery for oral cancer, and had supported the American Cancer Society throughout her life. Her physician, Dr. Lou Nishimura, later admitted this wasn't the reason for her death. The surgery removed all the remaining cancer before she died. There had to be another explanation. The true cause of her death was later revealed to be complications of AIDS. It caused her to develop liver failure from viral hepatitis. She was diagnosed with AIDS about a year before her death, but didn't want to go public about it. Her best friend, Pat Derby, said she simply accepted the disease and wasn't bitter or angry about it. Not even her doctor is sure how she contracted AIDS. She wasn't promiscuous and didn't use drugs. It most likely came from her husband, Mark Spaeth, who died of it shortly after they divorced. He allegedly told the press on his deathbed that he contracted it from her and that she may have gotten it on a trip to Africa. There's no certainty of how she got the disease, only that it led to her death. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Amanda Blake? Let us know in the comments section below.